Hey guys, welcome back to Keys of the Cosmos. I am excited about this video and here's why. Now I didn't decide to do an unboxing. You guys all know what a parcel looks like. You've all opened up your own parcels. There's no need for that. I'm only going to speed it up anyway. Here it is, the new telescope. I have been waiting months for this. As I'm sure a lot of you out there who have orders in, perhaps you've been in the same situation, whether it's a mount or a telescope. That's just the way it is right now in astrophotography. It's become a very popular hobby. And unfortunately, suppliers are finding hard to keep up with demand right now. But anyway, it's here. I'm excited. Um, it's definitely not what I've sort of focused this channel on. My simple setup, my small refractors, that's not going anywhere. Those are still my focus. Um, it'll still be the focus of this channel, getting into astrophotography and seeing you being able to get great results, even with simple equipment. Not that this is anything overly complicated. We'll, we'll talk about it a little bit, but... Definitely a lot bigger, not able to put this on a star tracker, that's pretty obvious. Um, but still a fairly simple telescope overall. And, um, you know, just something different. I want to expand the content in, on this channel to be able to cover just about everything while still keeping it simple. And hopefully being able to explain things in a simple way so that you understand. And then you can make decisions as well as far as where you want to go in this hobby and the sort of telescopes that you want to use. So, this is a Celestron Edge HD 8 inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. And just a little bit of a brief backstory. I'm going to do a video on all my telescopes in the 10 months I've been doing this hobby. Um, it's quite amusing. You guys will probably get a laugh out of it. The only one not laughing is my wife, of course, but um, I'm definitely going to do that video soon. But a little bit of backstory of how I ended up with this telescope. So when I first got into the hobby, um, I did mostly visual. Now, when I say when I first, it's literally the first month. Um, I knew pretty pretty soon into the you know doing visual that I wanted to get into astrophotography. I wanted to take those amazing pictures um, that I was seeing for myself. But uh, my second telescope ever was an old Celestron C8. I think it was about 10, 12 years old. I bought it off a guy on Kijiji. Um, he lived about an hour away. He actually um, bought and sold telescopes, so he would buy them, older ones. He'd fix them up, clean them. Um, collimate them, all that, and then he'd resell them. So I got my old C8. Here's a picture of it here. I got it for a great price, and I loved it. It was amazing. Um, it had great views. Uh, I would use it for visual, particularly for planets off my balcony. I had a nice, we have a nice balcony in downtown Toronto facing the lake, so it faces south. So um, Jupiter and Saturn go right by my balcony at night, and then later in the year, Mars does as well. So as far as visual, you really can't ask for more. I mean, dark skies would be nice, don't get me wrong. But for planets, it's not as big a deal as it is for astrophotography. They're, they're big, they're bright, and you really don't need the dark skies to still get pretty decent results. So yeah, I had my CA for a while, and I, I honestly planned on keeping it. I had no problems with it. I never really um, had many plans to do astrophotography as far as long exposure photography with it. But I always thought in the back of my mind, maybe I would try, because I know there's lots of guys that do it the C8s, the 8 SEs, and they get some really nice results. So it's not that you can't. And it was something I'd been considering, but for the time it was sort of more in the visual aspect that I was uh, using it for. But of course, as the story goes, I went to sell the mount. I had a fork uh, mounted um, Alt-As mount, the ones that generally, generally come with uh, a C8 or an 8 SE made by Celestron. But uh, I really didn't like it. it it was nice and small, so that was one thing that was pretty good. I mean, small as photography terms, of course, relatively speaking. But it did not track well. I mean, it was an alt as, yeah. Uh, so obviously those don't track as well as an equatorial. But uh, I just don't think it was working properly. It never really tracked well. Uh, even for doing visual, I constantly had to adjust the view. I wasn't able, I wasn't able to star align half the time. It just never seemed to work right. And um, because of my... A balcony, it's a long story, but I was facing south. I did not have a view of the north and I couldn't even polar align it. Um, so it just never really worked well. And when it came to planetary, um, here's my images. I just dipped my toe. Now, obviously, these are three images stitched together. This was not a triple conjunction. But I just dipped my toe into it. I was able to capture those. They're okay. They're definitely not great. But um, it just it wasn't to my liking. So the plan was to get uh, an equatorial mount to use that telescope with. Of course, I make an ad, I put it on Kijiji, and one of the pictures showed the mount with the telescope on top. Well, what ends up happening, 
I start getting questions and inquiries. Well, how much for both? How much for the telescope? Um, I ignored the first couple, but I got at least seven or eight. And I thought, you know what? I'll put in a, a price out there and let's see what happens. Well, sure enough, I ended up selling it for more than I paid for the telescope, which was great. Um, I got the telescope and mount together, so I ended up selling them. I actually sold them separately, if you can believe that. That's just the way it worked out. But um, I had no plan at all to sell the telescope, but because I got uh, pretty good money for it, I guess, you know, as I was mentioning before, there's a high demand right now, and it's hard to get stuff. So I was able to sell it to a nice guy in Calgary, and he's enjoying it as his first telescope. So now I was without a, a visual telescope anyway, and I, I definitely wanted that for this coming summer. So I was thinking about it a little bit, what should I get? Should I get a newer CH? Should I get the 8SE? Both great telescopes. But I thought, you know, I always had in the back of my mind doing astrophotography with this kind of focal length. And, um, you know, especially after this winter, where as you probably saw in my videos, my images on Instagram, Keys to the Cosmos, I was going after these galaxies with my small refractors. And you know what? Considering my sky conditions and the, you know, three, 400, not even 400 millimeter focal length with reducer, I think I got some pretty nice images. The whole point of those videos and the images was to show you that you can do it. You don't need to have a telescope like this. It is still possible to do when it comes to some of those bigger galaxies out there. But that being said, it made me really crave some more focal length, something where I could go after some of those smaller galaxies. Um, the ones that you see, you know, that are more faint, a lot more smaller. And you really do need a telescope similar to this. So with that in mind, I sort of did some research and I thought about getting a RASA. Now a RASA is similar to this, but it's only made for astrophotography. In other words, you can't put an eyepiece in it. It also doesn't have the focal length um, that this one does. It's an F2, so it's super fast, but it didn't have the visual aspect and the focal length. So that one, I ruled that one out and I came across this, the Edge HD. And this leads me into sort of a little bit about this telescope and why I made the decision to purchase this one. So this telescope is um, the same focal length as a C8 or um, the 8SC that I mentioned. So it's 2,032 millimeters of focal length. That's a lot. You know, that's four or five times my little wide field refractors. So it provided the focal length. I want more than enough to go after just about anything in the night sky, especially if you're willing to sink enough time into it. But for this particular telescope, it's sort of the best of both worlds. So you have the focal length to go to do visual and to, you know, do planetary imaging and stuff like that. But it also has some design cues that are made specifically for astrophotography. And I'll just mention a couple of those. So uh, first of all, there's the optics. They're called um, the Starbright Optical XLT coatings. So there's a coating on the lens, the, on the lens here that is, you know, brighter. It provides brighter views, brighter images. And it really is an upgrade from the typical C8 and even I think the 8SE, even though the 8SE um, has been improved over the years. So that was one big thing. So that was a, something really nice too. Now, as far as on the back side, um, you notice these vents right here? That helps with uh, dispersing heat. We know that heat is the enemy for long exposures. Heat causes noise. Um, and also when it comes to cooling down a telescope like this, when you wanna bring it down to ambient temperature before you use it, those vents really help with that. So that's, that's a small thing, but it still helps. And also these mirror clutches here. There's actually three of them. I don't think you can see in the video, but there's three of them around the back here. Those can be tightened to sort of lock the mirror in place once you find focus. And that way, when the mount is sort of following the night sky, you don't get mirror shift, where at first your image was in dead center of the camera, but as the night goes on, it starts to drift. And obviously for long exposures, you don't want that image moving. You want it dead center right in the middle. And so those help with that. So those were the sort of the main things. Um, and another thing about this telescope is they advertise that it's roughly three times flatter than the competition and then it's other similar models. So we've talked about focal reducers in the past. We've talked about field flatteners. I use them on all my refractors. Um, the reason is because without one, generally speaking, on the edges of the image, you're gonna get elongated stars and it can be out of focus. Telescopes generally only focus uh, in the center of the image. That's why we use a focal reducer or a field flattener. They also help to speed up um, our light gathering, but that's another, that's another aspect of it. But as far as, you know, a flat field, that's what we want. We don't want to have to crop all the way in. We want to be able to use the whole image if um, the target is big enough. 
With this telescope, it has the flattest field there that you can get with a, a similar size one. So that was important. Now, having said that, I did still buy the focal reducer that goes with it. It's a 0.7 time focal reducer. The main reason I did buy that is because this telescope is slow. So we've talked about F ratio before. The lower the number, the faster the telescope. My refractors, the red cat and the sharp star, I think they're around 4.5 with the focal reducer and 4.9, I believe the red cat is. Um, this is F10, that's really slow. It's not impossible, you can do astrophotography with it, but you're gonna have to soak a lot of integration time with an F10 telescope. With the 0.7, obviously that brings it down to uh, F7, which is reasonable for such a big telescope, that's not bad at all. And that's definitely very doable to do long exposures and not have to soak, you know, hours and hours into one target just to get a decent looking picture. So yeah, that's sort of the main reason why I bought it. Um, it really is the best of both worlds. To me, it's the best telescope you can buy if you're looking to do um, sort of visual, planetary and deep sky astrophotography. And I've read a lot of reviews. A lot of guys say it's their favorite telescope if they had to keep one that's what they would do. So I'm hoping that's the case with me. I'm really excited to use it. I don't have a mount for it. Uh, I'm still waiting on that. As I mentioned, that's just the way it's going right now. Hopefully I get that soon. I will definitely have a video out on that. This particular telescope weighs 14 pounds. So it's not crazy heavy, but we are talking double, even my sharp star. And um, obviously you cannot put this on a star tracker, as I mentioned. It's way too heavy. It would probably break it. So, um, I'm gonna need a bigger mount for this and um, a really accurate one as well. So that, that's coming soon, um, video to follow. Another little thing about this is with the focal reducer, it's 1,422 millimeters of focal length. So to me, that's, that's just about perfect. You wanna be up over a thousand. Um, it's not so much that you can't do deep sky objects. Um, obviously you're not gonna do like Andromeda with this telescope, it's way too big, the Andromeda galaxy, but there's a lot you can go after, the helix, the ring nebula. Uh, you can even go after sort of just the center of some of the objects out there. It's just a couple that come to mind, the hard nebula. Can't remember the name of the gas in the middle. Here it is here, I'll look it up and mention it. That's a beautiful target. Always wanted to go after that. Um, how about the pillars of creation, you know, in the Eagle Nebula? You need some focal length, really, to, to do it justice. I'm hoping maybe I have to use this um, to capture that, that classic uh, target there. So there's a few things that are running through my mind already when it comes to deep sky astrophotography and this particular telescope. Another good thing is, you know, I mentioned the RASA um, and it's amazing, F2, that's blazing fast um, light capturing capa um, capacity for a telescope this big. But as I mentioned, you can't do visual with it. The, the camera actually goes on the, on the lens side. It doesn't go on the back. There's nowhere to put any sort of eyepiece or camera on the back. That's the way it's designed. But with this one, if you want, you can actually turn it into a RASA. It's obviously not cheap. Not likely something I'll be doing. It's called the Hyperstar system. But you can basically remove, I think, one of the mirrors. You install that on. And now this becomes basically an F2 RASA telescope. And again, that brings the focal length down to four something. So you'd be using it for different uh, targets, but you have that possibility. And then you can go put the lens back on the mirror and turn it back into that um, long focal length, slower, but great for you know visual and planetary. So there's a lot of versatility with a scope like this. And the price isn't crazy either. So um, to me, it's a great telescope all around. And like I said, I've been reading a lot of reviews um, a lot of guys really love this telescope. I got the adapter for my DSLR, but eventually I'll be connecting a dedicated astrophotography camera. We'll have videos on that, but I'm going to try it with a, a DSLR to begin with. And yeah, as soon as I get my mount, boy, I'm looking forward to using this and putting it through its paces, learning how to use it. It is going to be a lot more challenging. It's easy to find targets with wide field. I'm not going to say easy, but um, when you get the hang of sort of uh, looking at stars and being able to use surrounding stars to find targets with wide field It's pretty forgiving, right? You're looking at a good chunk of the sky with a telescope like this You are really zoomed in so it's that's gonna be a challenge um, You know, but uh, those are all things I'll make videos on and sort of how I learned and hopefully, you know some of the, the, the challenging things but also, you know success, success stories in using this and I hope to have some really Great images for you guys. I'm, I'm looking forward as well to, you know, doing some planetary, as I mentioned already, 
uh, a telescope like this is hopefully going to provide some really nice optics and, and visuals to be able to see those really fine details on like say Mars and Jupiter and Saturn. Uh, to me that's pretty amazing. Some of these images that people are getting uh, it's unbelievable that they're doing it from their own backyard. And I'm hoping this telescope will help with that. I, I ideally, I would have liked to get the 9.25, but there are some things to consider. It's obviously quite a bit more expensive. It's quite a bit heavier, so it would have been pushing the weight for the mount that I'm getting. When you start put throwing telescopes like this on a mount, you do not want to be pushing it to the weight limit on that mount. You want to keep it somewhere around halfway, maybe three quarters. So if it says 40 pounds, you really don't want to go past 25, 30. Um, and then you got to factor in adding in, you know, maybe a guide camera, your camera on the back, all the accessories, and that gets up there pretty quick. So I wanted to stay around 20 pounds. Forget what the 925 weighs. So I'll put it here. I'll look it up and put it here. But it is somewhat quite a bit more. And it's also just quite big. Um, and I really don't want to take up any more space than my astrophotography stuff already does. So I decided to get the 8 inch. I'm more than happy with it. I'm excited. Um, and I know I'm going to get some good uh, pictures out of it eventually anyway, once I get the hang of it. It's going to be a learning curve, no doubt about it. As I mentioned, it's a lot less forgiving than a small wide, wide field refractor. And that's why I always recommend that as your first telescope, if you're going to be focusing on the astrophotography side. But yeah, I'll definitely have some videos on um, imaging planets. That's another side of it. It doesn't interest me as much, but I am still interested in it and I am looking forward to doing it again this summer. So there's going to be a lot of content coming from this telescope, and I'm really excited to use it. So that's it for this one, guys. Didn't want to keep it too long. Really excited. Here's the new telescope. Something totally different than what I have before, or at least what I've shown on the channel. And just to expand the content of this channel. So there's a little bit for everyone, no matter what it is you're into when it comes to astronomy and astrophotography. Feel free to mention in the comments, guys. Do you have one of these? What do you love about it? What don't you like about it? Do you have another telescope that you use from another brand or another style? Um, all that's, we love to hear from each other and help each other with this hobby. Thanks again, guys. Really appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.